<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Sunday with Mike. On today's show, we're going to cover a sound card for better quality, a great little lighting option for your evening events, labeling your power supplies, and then we're going to tackle a few questions from the gang in the Sunday with Mike Facebook group. If you haven't already joined that group, what are you waiting for? Grab yourself a cup of coffee and join me. I'll be right back. And welcome. This first cup of coffee is going to be dedicated to my buddy Sean over at Shining City. I just recently found out that he's not a coffee drinker, but he loves the show. So this one's for you, Sean. So today I wanted to discuss ways to get better sound quality from your laptop when you aren't using a controller that has a built-in sound card. Really, this applies to just about every one of us at some point. Even though I own a really nice controller with a built-in sound card, there are some events where I won't be using it for various reasons. It could be because I'm set up outside with bad weather expected, or it's a really simple backyard event. It really doesn't matter why you're not using a controller, just that you find yourself using the laptop sound card and there you are. It seems that most laptops, no matter how expensive or nice they appear to work, the built-in sound card is really lacking high quality output. I suppose this is a cost cutting measure to the computer companies, but if you are a DJ, then this should be an important concern of yours. Why wouldn't you want the best quality sound that you can get from your laptop? I ordered a brand new custom made Dell laptop a few years back and the sound was absolutely incredible when I was listening to this laptop on my desk, checking it out. But the very first time I hooked it up to a mixer using the eighth inch mini plug, I couldn't believe how bad this laptop sounded. I mean, it was really bad. After discussing it with Dell and getting nowhere with them, I decided to look for another solution. What I found was a fantastic external sound card that uses a USB jack and gives you much better quality sound than any built-in card that I've ever heard. I'm sure there are some that are better, but those are generally not off-the-shelf consumer laptops that most DJs tend to buy. Enter the Behringer UCA202 digital sound card. It offers low latency, high resolution 48 kilohertz converters for a low cost, high end sound. This unit will work with PCs or Macs and for $30, you can have it delivered to your door, which makes it a really great deal. So if you're still using internal sound cards on your laptop for any reason at all, and you're ready to improve the quality of your gigs, it's time to upgrade. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. You know, we often receive promo items from a company called National Pin asking if we would like to place an order with them. They always include a sample so that you can see what their pins or other items would look like. Recently, we received a unique light from them, and it looks like this. It's a, uh, it's a magnetic base, little LED bright light. Here we go, I'll, uh, I'll blind you. And uh, works out really, really well. Uh, it's got a flexible neck, and what was unique about it was this magnet at the end. So my wife, who is usually the receiver of such gifts, decided that I might need this one a little more than she did. So without much thought, I threw it in my trusty road kit and in less than a week, it would come in handy and save me. And I had no idea. 
After 18 years of being a full-time DJ, I never really gave it much thought when this client booked me for their evening ceremony and reception. As I thought about my dark dilemma where I needed to set up and run sound from, it occurred to me that this was my only my second outdoor evening ceremony in my entire career. The first one was just two weeks prior at the same exact venue, but I was in a different location and I had some lighting that was around me. This time I am totally in the dark and I need to be able to read my notes so that I play the right song at the right time. And I remembered this trusty little light with a magnet. So I got it out and I stuck it to the back plate of my speaker. Here's what it looked like. Since the light was up high, it lit up my controls and I could easily see all of the speaker settings. Keep in mind, you're looking at the back of the, the back side of this. So this is not what the guests were seeing and they didn't see all my ugly wires and stuff. This is just for you. Um, I took this picture so that you could see how handy this little light became when I least expected it. Now I was able to run the music from my phone using the DJ2 app that I like using for ceremonies and see my notes without any problem at all. So you never know when a new twist on something that you've been doing for a long time can come in handy when you least expect it. I did find a website that sells something very similar to what I've showed you and I'll put a link to that company down in the description below if you want to order just a couple of them. If you'd like to order some of these with your company name on the side for gifts to give out and then keep some for yourself, contact National Pin via the internet. Back in the old days, it was easy to use a substitute power supply as long as the specifications matched, meaning that it had the correct voltage, the correct current, power plug, and polarity. A few years ago, we started labeling all of our power supplies as a foolproof way of making sure that the correct power supply was always loaded up with its device that it was designed to work with. Not only is this process super quick to pair things up at the end of the night, it's also almost idiot proof. I say that because you have to go a step further when you do your labeling to make sure that you include the model number, not just the brand name. I have many of the same brands of adapters that are for different models and they're not interchangeable just because of the same company name. So when you label your power supplies and other devices, you should do this and make sure to put a brand name and a model number so that you can not you, you can avoid a costly mistake by plugging in the wrong thing. So I've got a couple of examples. We use the uh, P-Touch label maker. And uh, so not only does this say Dell, but it says the, the uh, model number. And then I have another one over here for a different laptop and it's marked on the side. It's also a, happens to be a Dell. But then there's other devices that we do some labeling with as well. So like, for example, here is one of my trusty Shure mic cases. So you see it says number one. And then inside of it is microphone number one and the receiver number one. So that way it just, you know, if you have multiple things out, it just makes things really, really simple, uh, especially at the end of the night for packing it up and everything ends up in the correct box. So... Uh, I'm not sure exactly how my Dell battery knew that I had screwed up one time way back when before we started doing all this labeling. And I plugged in a wrong power supply one time uh, and somehow the Dell battery, I checked the voltages and stuff and it was right. So I thought I could just substitute it. Everything was perfect. But somehow... Dell knew that it was not an official Dell power supply, but by then it was too late. The battery pack had blown a component inside of it. I don't know if it was a fuse or what, but it's not repairable. And so I ended up having to buy a replacement battery pack for that mistake. It could have been much worse and it could have wiped out my entire computer. So I was very lucky and I learned my lesson. Label all of your power supplies. Somebody else mentioned this recently in one of the uh, comments to last week's video. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. I just assume everybody does. So now we want to make sure that you do. 
So don't forget, label your power supplies, your microphones, and your wall warts today. So this week, we have some more questions from the gang and the Sunday with Mike Facebook group. Steve K. wants to know, what do you wear at your events? Tie or no tie? Well, when I first started my DJ business, I asked everyone that I knew for anything bad they had ever heard about DJs in general. The two things that kept coming up over and over again was, one, inappropriate comments by DJs that was not well received, and number two was DJs wearing inappropriate clothing for the event that they are performing for. I made it a point to avoid any cheesy comments, no matter how funny it may have seemed to us as DJs. And then I thought the best way to never disappoint one of my clients with my attire was to simply ask them, what should I wear? I would never want to be an eyesore to any of my clients or their guests in any event and every one of them is different, so it's really hard to judge sometimes. Also, it is possible to show up overdressed and become a problem in that way, too. Uh, for example, if I showed up with a mirror vest on and uh, it's a backyard barbecue, you know, it's going to look a little weird. So, when in doubt, wear a suit and a tie. And I say that because you can always take off the tie and then even the jacket if you need to, to keep downsizing to fit right into the event. Robin W. wants to know, crossfader or no crossfader? I don't use a crossfader at all. I learned how to run sound on professional mixing boards that have no idea what a crossfader is. Uh, that crossfaders are limited to DJ equipment. So when I started doing mobile DJ events, it was natural for me to use the channel faders instead of the crossfader. There have been several discussions about this lately in the groups, and it really comes down to personal preference. There's no right or wrong way. So try it both ways and use whatever works best for you. Thanks for the questions, and I hope that you'll join the Sunday with Mike Facebook group soon. The link is down below in the description. So that's going to be my show for today. I'll be back next week with all new topics to help you and your business. Be sure to share the show with your friends and give me your thoughts down in the comment section down below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So until next Sunday, be safe and thanks for watching.